Hello and welcome to Excel-BoardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-BoardTemplates.com where you're sure to get the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything of Excel. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a better sales funnel or sales pipeline chart in Excel. Previously I showed you how to make a sales funnel or sales pipeline chart using a pyramid chart that we flip on its top. You can either do it in 2D or 3D. Now I'll post links if you want to go build that kind of chart in the show notes. However, this type of chart uh, misrepresents the data because it's forced into this funnel shape. Notice that negotiations is 46 and proposal is 30. Well, negotiations, it's bigger this way, but it's smaller left to right on the width. So really deceives the human eye. So uh, I've developed this better sales funnel chart that you see over here. I'm going to show you how to make that. Now, what this does is this represents um, the actual value. So you see 22 million is just slightly bigger than 20 million here. Um, and 6 million is about three times smaller than 15 million. So you can exactly represent to the human eye what your sales funnel is going to look like. Let's get started. Okay, here we have some typical sales data. Um, and you probably have sales stages. So we've got prospecting, discovery, presentation, and quotation, and different amount of sales that you saw on the previous chart. What we want to do is we first want to insert a column in between our sales stage and our sales because we need to create what is we're going to call a filler series. Now, this filler series is going to be a formula. Um, what we need to do is we need to find the largest value over here in the sales. So we're going to say if. Now, <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to find the maximum value of everything over here in C6 through C or C2 through 3 C6. Now I'm going to hit my uh, I'm going to highlight this up here and hit my F4 key because I want that to be a fixed range because I'm going to copy the formula down. We can end our max formula. We want to check and see if that is equal to that cell C2 right there. So if it is equal to C2, we know that this value of our filler series is our maximum value. Um, and if so, we don't need any filler for that. So we're just going to do a zero um, if that's true. If it is not true, if it's false, then what we want to do is we want to do a calculation where we want to find the max, once again, of this entire range right here. And I'm going to highlight that again and do my F4 key. Now, <clears throat> we're going to find the max of, of the entire range over there. And we are going to go ahead and subtract our value in C2, just moving my arrow up there. Um, and then we are going to divide this whole thing by 2. So um, this value right here. So I need to put this in parentheses. So I'm going to add a parentheses there. I'm going to add a parentheses at the end. And I'm going to divide all of that by 2. So that's my if statement. Now what we're doing here is we're going to calculate the maximum value in our uh, sales data. We're going to subtract our value over on the right our, of this current row. Um, and then we're going to divide all of that by 2. And what that's going to do is that's going to center all of our data um, within that maximum column. Otherwise, our bars uh, will be kind of floating to the left, floating to the right. We want it to look like a sales funnel or a sales pipeline chart. All right, so uh, since that one is the maximum, we've got 0 there. If I copy this down, you can see that we have <coughs> um, the values uh, being represented here in our fill series. I'm just going to make that some currency values and now let's go ahead and create our chart. Okay, so to create our chart what we want to do is highlight the range, go up to our insert ribbon, we're going to go over to a bar chart and we're going to choose a stacked bar chart. Let's move that up here so that you can see that a little better. Um, so this is going to be our sales funnel. It's the chart title. Now, um, you'll notice that prospecting is here on the bottom and negotiations on the top, which is different than my sales stages data that I have over here. So what I need to do is I need to flip this vertical axis. I'm going to right click on my vertical axis and click on format axis. And then in my format axis um, options, there is a choice down here that says categories in reverse order. I'm going to click on that. And um, let's go ahead and do a lot of other access options that we're going to need to do here. Um, and actually, if we just keep this dialog box open here, it'll change to whatever selection we want. So um, for instance, if we want to come in here and select this filler series, this blue series here, 
and we go up to our fill options, we want to do no fill. Also, if we go back to our series options, we want to change our gap width to 0%, and that's going to stack it all together and make it look a little more pyramid-y. Um, all right, so next thing we want to do is this horizontal axis. I'm going to select that, and then um, what we want to do is we want to change um, some of these values here. You'll notice if I move this over to the side, um, see Excel puts in this padding here because it wants to make sure you know what the next grid line is. Well, I don't want that. I want actually to fill up the entire chart. So to do that, we're going to click on the axes, then click on our axes options here. We want to change our minimum bound to be zero. And then we want to change our maximum value to be this sales maximum here, this 33 million that we have. So let's go ahead and, and uh, change that to 33 million, 631, 725, and hit enter. And you can see now that it has fixed what we needed it to do. All right, so we can go ahead and close that one down. Let's clean up this chart a little bit. We don't need these grid lines in here. So I'm going to select those and hit my delete key. We don't need the legend anymore. So I'm going to select that and hit my delete key. We don't need the vertical axis anymore because we're going to add data labels in here. So I'm going to hit my delete key and we don't need um, the horizontal axis. But before I delete it, there was one other thing that I, oh no, we're just going to go ahead and delete it because we'll fix the labels when we uh, work on that. So let's go ahead and hit the delete key there. So our sales funnel is taking shape. Now, what we need to do, it's really hard to tell which of these is which series and what's their value. So click anywhere in your chart, go up to your design ribbon, and then over in the add a chart element button, we're going to have um, data labels. Let's see, data labels, there we are. And we're going to choose more data label options. Now. That brings up our option box, which is what I wanted. Now you can see it's added some for the filler series as well as our sales series. Um, let's just click on the, uh, um, the data labels for our filler series and hit the delete key. Now these ones, let's click on the ones in the sales series. And what we want to do is we want to change <coughs> the um, label options to be category name we want to show the value and we want to have a separator of a new line in case things get really small we want to make sure that they are wrapping we want to make sure they're centered and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change uh, my values um, you can do this if you like or not I had created a custom value for my number format and uh, I'll also put a link the, to this in the show notes um, I'm putting in the special custom format that says let's do a dollar sign um, and if it's greater than 999,000, let's do the million as a dollar sign with an M. And we're going to take out anything in there. These two commas are taking out the values um, in between the millions. And, uh, and then if it's hundred thousands, it's going to do similar thing. It's going to take out any um, thousands and put a K at the end. Otherwise, it's just going to show the number. And so now we've fixed that as well. So you can kind of see our funnel is taking shape now. Um, last couple of things I want to do, let's go back and uh, click on our data labels, go up to your home ribbon, and let's change the color of these uh, from black to white, kind of like those, they stand out a little bit more. Now we need to change the color of each one of these individual bars. So what we do to, for that is click on your chart, click on any one of the series a second time. So you notice when I click on the series, they're all highlighted. If I click on one data value, there it is, it's just done that one and if I right click on it it says format data point that way I know I'm formatting that data point and we're gonna go into our fill options we're gonna do a solid fill and we're going to do a uh, let's start here with this orange color I'm gonna then you can just click on the next data point and it knows you're on the next data point and we can just go ahead and select the blue I'm on the next data point and we're gonna do purple next one is uh, green and then finally the last data point. Now see I unselected it, it selected them all and you just need to click on that one again. Well, I have to avoid my data label so let's just click on it. There it is. Now you see that I've only selected that one data point um, and we'll make this one red. Now <clears throat> let's just select the entire series. I also like to go in here and do a border and doing a solid line and let's just do black for everything and then we can close down that. So there you see we've made our better sales funnel chart. Okay, so let's change some values and kind of see what happens here. So, um, so let's say discovery is not 22 or 20 million, but it's in fact um, more like uh, 5 million. 
So let's see, 5,000, 50,000, 500,000, 5 million. You can see that it, it represents exactly what that funnel would look like. It is no longer a straight funnel with all uh, smaller and smaller sides going down. It really does show the eye what um, is really going to be representative there. Now, um, if you go larger or uh, um, smaller than what we set that upper bound to be, our maximum bound for our horizontal axis. So let's say I change this to 15 million in our pipeline. Notice that there's all this white space over here right now. So to fix that, what you want to do is select your chart, go up to your design ribbon, go into your chart elements, go into your axes, and do um, the primary horizontal axes. And remember, we fixed to this amount to be 33 million before. So just right click on it, do format axes, and you can come in here and uh, um, change this maximum bound. Um, just in case you end up needing to continue to use this chart and our new maximum bound was 22 million three sixty six two eighty eight hit enter you can close that down um, now <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna hit my delete key on that notice it fills up the entire chart again because it's using the upper bound as our larger part of the sales funnel series so uh, hopefully that helps you uh, create a better chart um, than our other sales pipeline um, that is more accurate to the eye and that you can uh, um, hang your hat on so that you know that each one of those series represents an actual size equal to what your sales pipeline is, doesn't distort it for the eye, um, and helps readers just actually more easily see which is larger and which is smaller and what magnitude of smaller it is versus over here we have to actually read each one of these. Closed one is 25, negotiations 46, proposals 30. Oh, that's a lot smaller. It doesn't look smaller to me. Um, in my eye and then um, qualifications is three times larger than proposals it doesn't really show me that it's ex three times my eye just has a hard time seeing that so once again this is Steve equals true at excel dashboard templates.com please subscribe to my video channel so that you're sure to get the latest post delivered directly to your inbox also visit my blog at excel dashboard templates.com where you're sure to find other great posts regarding excel thank you